Sun. And I'm Paris Him. And welcome to Nerd Talk on Tuesday, June 19th, 2012. Tonight, I played an app. I read a book. And I'm a millionaire by selling yellows on the Diablo Real Money Auction House. A millionaire, I tell you. Millions of dollars. Right. And by that we mean he he hasn't actually installed Diablo 3. No, well, I don't let minor details like that keep me away from millionaires. The last I checked, I was at $4.50. Work continues. Sen has this idea that maybe he can make just enough in the Diablo Real Money Auction House to pay for the game. Personally, the majority of my time these days has been spent halfway between my online classes that I'm taking and actually painting some miniatures for an upcoming tournament. Apparently I'm the only one not going to school over the summer. Do you know off the top of your head what your hour count is? Hmm? For Diablo? Yeah. Uh, The last I checked on my Barbarian, I had hit 35 hours. And he is still in Act 2 of Hell difficulty. It's not very long. No, and considering he's not at the, like, the range where he would be earning items that are worth value, being at 450, not so bad. No. Oh, compared to the last two weeks, we're practically strapped for news, but mostly just because the last two weeks were absolutely overflowing. Right. Also because <clears throat> E3 was a thing. E3 was a thing, it happened, Watch Dogs clearly won, and that is the end. The Kotaku posted the story with the headline, Blizzard says StarCraft Ghost Revival is as likely as Lost Vikings 3, and oh. I chose to interpret that as both of we're these going things to get are coming. both Lost Vikings 3 and StarCraft Ghost. So You know, you know what, if they can convince Activision that they'd make money by doing it, both of those things would happen. Well, I... I get the impression that Blizzard has a fair amount of autonomy from Activision, and Ghost, they were really trying on Ghost, and they just didn't succeed in releasing it. Right. You, uh, you probably have to as a symptom trust. of it being a console game, and their expertise all being in PC development. Right. You have to trust Blizzard's judgment that, hey, this game would be a flop. We don't want to release it. They, they've stuck by that in the past, and you know what? That's really great of them. <clears throat> I have no problem whatsoever with them making the decision that, no, this doesn't meet our quality standards, we're not going to release it. That said, you know, I could see some potential in Lost Vikings 3. It'd basically be Trine 2 all over again, but hey, there's, Trine there's 2 was There's really no fun. reason they couldn't do it as like a, a tablet app and have it be wildly successful because it's Blizzard and nostalgia is a hell of a thing. Yeah, that game you could do on a real small budget coming right. from it being a really old franchise. Mm-hmm. So Lollipop so, yeah. Chainsaw is out. We haven't had a chance to play it yet. Nope. But for some I'm reason, busy. during the pre-release for Lollipop Chainsaw, I was excited about it. And I and don't you, sir, actually are know wrong why. For doing that. Yeah, I don't know why you're thrilled about this. This is a Suda Fifty One game that we're talking about. So I, I will, I will defend him on past tense. Right, like uh, I'll give him credit that I didn't even realize from their advertising that the game had a support cast made up of uh, Juliet's younger and older sisters and her father, who apparently makes an appearance in the game. And that they are, I guess, a clan of zombie hunters. As if that, that this world just has a problem with zombies. They keep appearing and messing up everything. Uh, mostly, I just kind of wasn't expecting Juliet to be a dope. But then I've watched in-game footage and I'm like, oh, Ju- Juliet is dumb. I guess I should have expected that. Yeah, oh. she's kind of a novice zombie hunter and so the game makes it out of her way to to characterize her as kind of dumb and bad at what she does actually no she's fantastic at killing zombies she's not good at thinking about killing zombies as far as mechanics go it looked like a a fairly standard god of war devil may cry kind of thing if you're into that which Uh, 
I, I, I don't was, know if it was a good one, but I, I it was, was seeing bad. it more as like it's on the same level of action as No More Heroes. Generally, uh-huh. uh, single plane, combo based. Um, the only difference is where Travis Touchdown stole a lot of his moves from anime and uh, and Mexican wrestling. Juliet's going to steal most of her moves from the playbook of how do we get the most panty shots for our time. Yeah, and that the, the achievement for the panty shot disappointed me. Under her skirt. Yes. I, I was really, not aware of that until give you that after in the first, like, my 10 disappointment had set in. That's, not <laughs> that's like true. The, that should be the achievement for, wow, you watched, you watched the first cutscene. That's the title screen. Although, yeah. that, that seems kind of like a... That would be actually very funny if they had that achievement and it unlocked as soon as the title screen popped up. But that, that, would, would, be, that would be self-referential. This is, that would be satire and do. hilarious. Yeah. Except this is, we know you're going to do it and we're going to encourage that behavior. No, you're going to do it. I don't think you have a bloody choice in the matter. I think the game's going to force it on you at some point regardless. There was one mechanical thing that I thought was sort of interestingly integrated into the story, which is that there's these headless zombies that are walking around, and you stick the head on your belt onto the zombies, and then you play a, ri- a little rhythm mini game Where to make the zombies the do zombie what you want. Right. Well, that well, like, seems like a slightly cool system, but from not I enough heard... to justify a whole game. The dialogue in the first half of the game is completely atrocious, and you will be just endlessly facepalming and groaning at it. But the dialogue in the second half of the game, where the, the plot actually seems to pick up... The achievement, by the way, is called, I swear I did it by mistake. I guarantee there are some people who did it by mistake. I am now really disappointed actually, that that achievement it, is not just named something... Oh, you have to hold it? And, um... Apparently she's going to put her hand out to try and block to stop your you. view, and you have to continue holding it despite that. Wow. You know, that is self- self-referential, though, because that's funny that the game is like, dude, stop it. Stop. Fine, here's your achievement. <laughs> yeah, but then it's even creepier because right. then you keep doing it. I don't, know, we'll that's... it. I don't know, are we considering this any creepier than having to watch Travis Touchdown take a dump to save the game? Yeah. Just yep. checking. Also, the it's not, having... It's not nearly as sexually objectifying. Is and Travis really Touchdown is not like, hey, stop looking at me. Yeah. No, I'm also like thinking He's of some of aware. the other various horrible things that were in the No More Heroes franchise. Uh, sp- like, throwing the, um, the, the rapper, the, the very first boss in No More Heroes 2, he throws his floozies at you as a weapon during the opening cutscene. It's like, that's a thing. And Travis is just like, I'll just cut through these like he threw what at me and keep going. Uh, I'm now tremendously disappointed that that the panty shot achievement does not unlock on the title screen. That would have been You'd think that would be a thing. So, Sen, uh, back, like, at the beginning of E3, you made me put Resident Evil 6 or Dead Space 3? I don't remember which on our list, but neither of them we have gotten around to. Okay, so I can actually talk a lot about Dead Space 3 because I watched the 20-minute developer video that was recently posted to uh, Kotaku, in which we have the executive producer of the game introducing each of the scenes, and my god... This guy could not be reading from a script any harder if he, like, was visibly showing us word for word what he was reading. Yeah, that seemed like a major theme all throughout E3. Uh, One of the notes I had on my E3 notes was that Reggie, Reggie fils seems like a crazy robot because (laughs) he's reading from a teleprompter all the time and he could not be more awkward about it. Right. Just awkwardness to 11. Oh no, if if you watch this, uh, the last checkpoint that went up, there was a Danica Patrick quote that was just atrocious. Uh-huh, although that quote was released in a press release, so it, right. it's not like you're watching a video and it's really awkward reading from a teleprompter. It is just like, Danica Patrick never came within a hundred feet of that quote. Somebody right. else typed it and then put <clears throat> Danica Patrick's name on it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so Dead Space 3. Um... I love the new premise that we're going from the dark, shadowy hulls of space stations onto an ice planet. 
I think that's really cool because, like, if the entire goal of setting the series in a dark uh, spaceship was, yeah, you won't be able to see very well, putting me in a snowstorm where I can't really see anything very well except for giant white haze is equally as terrifying. Hence uh, the Silent Hill franchise's penchant for using fog. Right. That That is just as effective, and I like the new shift. What I don't like so far is two things. I don't like the idea of co-op, and I've already seen this addressed in a couple places that, you know, it's just as terrifying to really be on this adventure with a guy standing right next to you as it is to be doing it by yourself, because that guy could turn into a giant shrieking monster at any second. Which Um, would be very cool if that was actually a risk. Right, Uh, but unfortunately that's your co-op partner, so he's going to be fine. drop-in, drop-out co-op that was announced. Right, which is unfortunate. I think having a mechanic in where you got a... You could potentially have someone traveling with you, and it was an advantage because he could help you fight. But there was also the chance that he'd be infected and try to kill you. Uh, What they should do is do it Journey and or Dark Souls style, where it is unclear if a a model in the world is another player, and you don't know the other person's gamer tag. Okay, I guess Dark Souls isn't like that, but both Dark Souls and Journey disable voice chat. So... They should do it such that Um, a person could be a co-op player, or it could be an AI. And then there should be insanity effects where that incentivize you to kill your co-op player. Well, this is interesting because a Visceral Games developer has confirmed that it was, quote, always intended to have co-op in Dead Space. uh, Sure it was. um, Their inspiration was System Shock 2, which had co-op support. I don't know if that's true. Um, also, if the player chooses to play alone, uh, John Carver, the... Yeah, he becomes an NPC. Person. He'll still be there. Yeah, he's gonna show up anyway. Yep. Um, I- I'm questioning from the trailer, one, how Ellie survived at all, considering in the, the promotional footage she wasn't wearing a spacesuit of any kind and got ripped out of the, sh- the sh- part of the ship that got torn away during an atmospheric... Uh, uh, descent, while not wearing a parachute, onto an ice planet where she was wearing like a jumpsuit. So I think that answers the is Ellie alive question right there, or at least it should. Um, the other problem I'm having is that Dead Space has always really been about improv weaponry. Like, in the original game, your your first and most reliable weapon was a plasma cutter. Something that is specifically designed to be a uh, a piece of hardware. That just happens to be really good at severing limbs. This dead space from all the promotional material I've seen, Isaac is wielding a military-grade shotgun-slash-assault rifle from the start of the game that has universal clips. Yeah, that, and that... Uh, my that definition of the survival horror franchise, or survival horror genre, is almost exclusively based around the limitation of ammo. So, Universal Clips takes it right out of that for me. Right. It really feels like Dead Space 3 has become a military shooter. And uh, the reason that's kind of disappointing is that there are a lot of shooters that are very good, but there aren't very many horror games that are very good. Right. So having one migrate from horror to shooter is a loss. Right. Dead Space 2 was an amazingly terrifying game. I absolutely loved the the sheer feeling of horror at realizing, oh crap, I have to go back in the Ishimura. I don't want to go back in there. Like, that whole section of the game was wonderful. Even though there, there were surprisingly fewer enemies in that section of the game than in any other part of Dead Space. That section was frightening because you had to revisit all of those locations and see the damage that was done there. And you also, s- just because there's the effect of, if you're not fighting Necromorphs right now, at some point you're going to be doing it again. Yeah, what's so the you've got to expect to they're around every corner, and there's they never come, and it's just the building of the tension as a result. Absolutely. That... That was fantastic. I absolutely loved Dead Space 2 for the the horror that they managed to put in that game. Dead Space 3? The need to stomp on everything was kind of Uh, theme-breaking. Just crazy gore. My foot will destroy everything. (laughs) 
<clears throat> you know, finding money in people's chests and stuff. Kind of weird. I'm so sorry for the loss of human life. Hold on, let me stomp this guy. He might have a clip. Speaking of tension due to zombies not bursting out and attacking you, Pixie, tell me about Zombies Run. Ooh, that, that was a... Don't, don't do it. <laughs> don't do well, it. Well, it's you're probably trying fine to do it. at this you're point, probably already because done it. if our audience listens to lots of podcasts, it is actually, like, a thing. Uh, one of the earlier podcasts <laughs> I listened to in my listening career is the End well, Gadget podcast, which career. eventually became the Verge cast. And they spend just about a quarter of their show, every show, talking about segues and making puns about uh, segues in conversation relative to segues that are the gyroscopic uh, scooters. And then they have a sound effect of a gyroscopic sc scooter anytime they change topics. Anyway, so. Zombies on gyroscopic scooters are chasing you, Pixie. They're gonna take your supplies. Run. <laughs> Run faster. So, I played a game on my iPhone, and let me see what else it's out for. I know you can also play it on an iPod Touch, but let's see. Zombies. Run. Do we do this for the Android as well? Is that what we're checking? Uh, Android app on Google Play, yes. Cool. And, oh, yeah, because that just came out actually last week, mm -hmm. or earlier this week, depending on when you're listening to this. Um, <laughs> Next week, if Pyro Slim is... Pyroslim. Pyroslim is slow at the uh, editing. Yeah, that, that's Pyro, my name after I go a on a diet. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I was going to say that's your new weight loss supplement. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. I can be a billionaire. It's the perfect name. Introducing my marketing Pyro strategy is all locked down. Nerd Talk presents Pyroslim. Just a nice little video here. Of Pyroslim? No, I hope so. On the Zombies Run game website. And so... Pyro Slim is just Diet Red Bull, by the way. <laughs> so anyway, it's... it's I don't know if I could call it a game, I guess. It's got some RPG elements, anyway. It, it's something to motivate your ass to move faster. Basically. It's an augmented reality game. Yes. Um, so you start, and... Don't start it here. You're not going to run during the show. No. And there's... A whole bunch, like 22 different story missions that you can take sequentially. Um, story is you are a runner at this township, Able Township, and they start with a population of 60, and so you can see I've leveled up significantly. But Okay. Uh, this, my Your job is to them. run, and that gives you points, which you allows you to you help. You collect supplies. Okay. So I've collected everything from batteries to underwear. To... That's important in the zombie apocalypse, really, because a lot of people are going to be crapping theirs. Um, even simple entertainment things like books, just to keep morale up, and you can a lot. Um, so you go as you run, you're collecting supplies. All this takes place in your headphones. You don't have to look at or interact with the screen at all once you've decided. Yes, I'm running. And these are my settings. It's, it's all good. largely an excuse to be an exercise app, right? I mean, the gaming yeah. is built around that. It's an exercise app that appeals to fans of zombie stuff. Basically. And so it, it plays out this story through little sound clips that'll play between your music tracks if you're listening to music. If, if you select that you want to be listening to music, that is... Anyway, so you'll play a song, then you'll get a clip of the story. And it'll play through your ears... Kind of like a radio play, like you'll hear the effects of like the chopper going down as you get shot down in like the fur in the opening sequence, and um, then just kind of do, do your job as a runner is to go out, run around, pick up supplies, get back to camp. Hopefully, not run into zombies. Hopefully, not lure any zombies back into the camp. Mean meaning you needed to be running fast enough at the end of your run mm -hmm. to avoid that. So usually I'll get you'll. I've noticed that you'll usually get hit by a swarm or two um, when you're close to the end or as soon as your mission ends. And that'll but be you can't quite predict it, so faster. you've got to try and save your strength so that if zombies attack, then you can do a burst of speed. Yeah, then that's what I find is really kind of hard. Because there's, like, in-story 
they're kind of trying to motivate you to go faster to begin with. Like, oh, I can see one over there behind you. Run faster. Uh, like, just in game. And you kind of get sucked. I, I kind of got sucked into it. I'll find myself replying to the fictitious people in my earphones. <laughs> I sounded like a crazy person. Maybe I shouldn't take you running on the trail near my house then. People are going to think I'm the guy who runs with the crazy person. But... Uh, it's 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 funny. It's got a sense of humor there. Um, they, they they reference other townships. In fact, while I was out running today, uh, what we did was the gates on the town on Able Township got stuck open, and so myself and another runner had to lure the zombies away while also staying fast enough so that we don't get turned into noms and. So, At one point, we were like, well, we're surrounded on these other sides. I guess the only place we can go is north. Hey, there's this other township over here. We could run them into their, uh, over by their camp. <laughs> wow. I don't worry about it. They've got guns. <laughs> You're a jerk. <laughs> it wasn't my idea. You're a jerk runner. Actually, they hang a lampshade on the fact that you don't respond to anything that they say, kind of like a Gordon Freeman type. They'll, they'll do the, you're not going to argue with me, are you? Uh, like they, they kind of hang a lampshade on the fact that you don't ever talk. Like you Alex know, Vance all... in Half Life Two is like, hey, you're kind of the strong, silent type, aren't you? Mm. Yeah, no. Uh, this makes me think of a picture I saw this week of like Dora, uh, as in Dora the Explorer, just staring at the uh, at the viewer, and it said, "Which is more awkward, watching Dora stare at you or responding to her?" <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say if. I have a solution for people in your town thinking that Pixie is crazy when you're out running, is that you should just run slightly faster than her, and then people will think you're running away from the crazy person, <laughs> and it'll be fine. Motivation. <laughs> Run from the crazy person. Uh, so you mentioned another runner. It, are there multiplayer aspects? That hadn't crossed my mind, but that sounds like uh, it could supposedly, be awesome. Supposedly, according to the FAQ, this is something that's going to be added later. Um, but like I said, they just... Like, a few days ago added support for Android so it was kind of a s slow thing right now uh -huh. um, it, it's a eventually thing but not right now well, this was $8 that's hugely expensive that's, yeah, by the standards really of apps app. but not really expensive for by the standards app. of say XBLA games, games. right mm -hmm. it seems like a pretty um, cool so toy it's got a story going on um, you've also got if you should tire up the story for whatever reason there are supply-based missions, and these are things that are meant to, um, I haven't all Just be lines. independent things. Well, just, I, I'd say, I've done this one already. Lure them away from the town. Stuff like that. Or run around until you find this item. Um, those are meant to be replayable, basically. Randomly so generated. Once you, the once you finish the story, you can, you can basically get away with doing these over and over if you want. Right. Uh, as you, as you're running around, you'll randomly pick up supplies. It'll give you an audio cue, like, you picked up a pack of underwear or a can of food or whatever. A box of porn. Nine so millimeter bullets. A baseball bat. Is it funny that I immediately thought baseball bat as weapon and assigned it to the armory instead of assigning it to the recreational facilities? That just <laughs> means you've been watching baseball. zombie movies way too much. <laughs> well, that just means you're correct. Baseball isn't a sport. <laughs> not in the zombie apocalypse, it's not. So yeah, there's, and then of what you do with your supplies is when you get back, you can drag and drop them onto the different buildings, and basically you level up your buildings as you level them up. You get more missions. Um, you'll obviously get them in a different order if you're, say, leveling up your hospital before your armory or vice versa. So there's a few different buildings that you can allot those resources to, and so it's got a little bit of an RPG elements type thing to it. I, I find the characters are really funny and memorable. Um, so it plays music from your music library, but it kind of builds it into own... the universe. Yes, because... there, is a, there, is a, there is an in-narrative reason as to why you're listening to music, which is, I think, well, they set it up in, like, the second mission or so, that uh, a couple of the guys in the comm tower are bored, and so they're going to start making radio broadcasts. And so, on occasion... And even after after you've finished a story mode mission, it'll be like, okay, you're done with this mission, we're switching to radio mode. And between clips of, between your music tracks, 
you'll get clips of like basically DJ banter. <laughs> okay. Which I think is really cool. And then we're gonna play you another song here. You know, uh, like, I'll just say anything that gets people exercising, I'm for. If this motivates gamers and and zombie um, film nuts to get out need and to move, to be using a smartphone on this, it is compatible with the iPod Touch oh, because really? because you don't have to be using your GPS. It's not focused. Because this means that you can even use it on a treadmill. You can use it while you're walking. You can use it on a bike, I guess, but it would sound kind of weird. Right. In story standpoint. Um, because because really the it's only just thing, using the accelerometers. Yes. You can choose to use the accelerometer, um, basically. I, I choose to have it get a fix on my GPS before I go out, but you can also use the accelerometer. Cool. Um, particularly if you're in an area that has crap for reception or you're using your iPod, stuff like that. Which cool. I thought was really cool, too. So it's, it's much more accessible, and that, that means you could even be walking or using a treadmill. Uh, y you could, in theory, just be walking and then put on a sprint when, when, you, when you run into zombies. But you or, tend to look crazy if you're like Sen with his public. Pokewalker, you could duct tape it to an oscillating fan. <laughs> you chump. And then win. <laughs> Um, the thing is, it's going to it's, it's it's looking for basically a change in pace, not a specific speed. So it wants you to put on more speed than what you were previously doing. <laughs> and actually, you can turn the zombie chases off if you don't want those to be screwing with your routine here. So I've got okay. them on. You don't have to. Uh, the other take on this from something like to get people to exercise to out to vehicles. Yeah, to is that it's just. This is a window-dressed version of apps that Pixie and I have already used for this purpose a number of times, like right. ma I map my run. It's, it's the same thing, except with a game wrapped around it to make it a little bit more interesting. Yeah, and I think the story would help keep people motivated, too. You can still um, post them to Facebook or Twitter, your runs, after you finish them. Uh... I think they're going to be... But you end up looking more crazy when you do that. I did make Because it'll, it'll say, like, Pixie picked up three med kits and a pack of underwear and avoided <laughs> uh, 72 zombies. Let's see. I'm going to go back and take a look at what the actual text of that post looked like. Or it will yeah. say things like, Pixie played Zombies Run in a grocery store instead of on a sidewalk like normal people. She didn't know there was a pause button. <laughs> okay, I guess I have to tell that story now. The The way that it works is, for the zombie chases, is you know, randomly while you're running, it'll say, alert, zombies detected, or something like that. And then you'll get a beep, 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 beep. And they'll, like, throw some background groaning and chuckling noises or whatever. But it's the beeping that you have to pay attention to, because the frequency of the beeps tells you how close the zombies are to you. And, of course, you'll get a warning, like, oh, they're only 15 meters away or whatever. Um, but, you know, that, that's supposed to help you keep pace with, oh god, I have to run faster. Right. And the thing with that, I'm, I'm, I'm laughing because I'm trying, to, I'm remembering the story that I have to tell now, because this is all set up for that. If you get caught, um, I think you lose, like, supplies or something. I, I, I don't know, I haven't managed to get caught yet. I don't have the motivation to do so. She can outrun zombies, folks. Here we go. Here's the post I made. Oh, this is the post that I made by myself, where I just look crazy by virtue of my own. Crazy. Here we go. This is the post that I made for Facebook. When you just use the auto post. So just completed such and such mile run playing mess. Collected 16 supplies, outran one zombie mob. And, and it also we... called you stupid for running at noon. Uh, no, that was me. Ah. Uh. That was me. <laughs> I was assuming the app was calling you an idiot. <laughs> yep, that was me. I'm just very self-aware. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> and so one thing that you might find helpful as a feature in this, especially since it you know, tends to randomly throw panic-inducing zombie attacks at you, is that there's a pause button. In fact, it's right here. <laughs> you can look at it. Pause. Yep. That's a button. And, uh, oh, apparently later on in the month it'll be coming to the Windows phone, too. Now that it's come out for Android. Yay! Oh, yeah, I guess I should add, add that Microsoft press conference where they announced some tablets to our notes list. Forgot about that. Stop interrupting me! <laughs> Stuff! So yeah, there's pause, replay, clip, stop, run. 
it's the buttons right there. I decided I was going to jog to the grocery store, pick up a couple things I needed, and since I was being so good and, you know, I'm getting exercise, maybe a smoothie. I get to the grocery store. Alert, zombies detected. Oh, crap. And so I start sprinting around the grocery store trying to avoid being tackled by zombies that aren't actually there wow, because picks. I didn't realize there was a pause button. <laughs> I and am, inadvertently I, frightened look, the entire supermarket. Uh, hold on a you, second. You look, I, I will say that you do look like a crazy person because I I I I'd not just catch myself like laughing at like a joke that Sam the guy in the, the fictitious radio made. Uh, I'd also like warning zombies detected. I'll just I was just be just booking it down one road, shouting, "Oh hell no, zombies!" <laughs> Pixie finding yet another way to make the uh, majority of her t- hometown think she is a crazy person. Uh, I might just be a crazy person. Has that ever occurred to you? Nope. So, uh, yeah. Hold on. My my computer locked up for a minute, so my our recordings are going to be desynced. Mm, let's see. Uh, clap so that there will be a big mark on your audio so I can split them and resync. Okay. Okay, continuing. Okay, the one spot where there's clipping from him clapping. <laughs> there you go. So That is how you'll know. It'll be that great big red line. I hadn't realized it, but I keep looking at uh, footage from Beyond, the new Quantic Dream game, and yeah. I kept thinking it was Bioshock Infinite. And I, I, I was yeah. subconscious. I didn't know this, but I was. Because in Bioshock Infinite, you play as the cop dude, and then... There's the little girl with the wizard powers. Yep. And in yeah, Beyond she's not Two a Souls. Little girl. Well, right. And neither is Ellen Page. Right. So you there's the there's the dude with the gun, and then Ellen Page and her ghost with the, her wizard powers. Yep. Hmm. What's that? The gaming industry doesn't have a lot of unique ideas left? Surprise. I haven't heard anything about Bioshock Infinite in a long time. Such a triple A game. It's supposed to be out this year. <laughs> Uh, Wikipedia says it's slated for February 2013. Oh, yeah, that's right. They pushed it back again. They pushed a lot of things back. Uh, The other thing about Beyond is that they announced... At the beginning of E3, it seemed like the title was just going to be Beyond. But then they said that the title is Beyond, colon, Two Souls. I was like, (laughs) oh, you took a a really good, catchy title and made it kind of dumb by adding a subtitle to it. Good work. Yeah, they've got this theory that subtitles make everything better, and it's not true. It really uh, isn't. It's like Sim City is the name of a game that's already been released and is very popular, but nobody's ever made a game named Beyond. So that was like prime territory you had staked out. You abandoned right. it. Well, if if you've got an original name for a franchise, why spoil it with a uh, with the subtitle? I, I hate to tell you, but you could have called your game Kingdoms of Amalur, and it would have meant just as much to me as Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning. Well, the idea behind that is that 38 Studios was a building hype for their coming MMORPG, which would be set in the Kingdoms of Amalur universe. But um, their publisher, I don't know if it was EA or Activision, it's, they mostly marketed it just under the Reckoning name because they didn't want to give press to the MMO and also because it was kind of a dumb name. Oh, there were competing interests there. And and Kingdoms of Amalur isn't. That's... Like, that name sort of suggests that Amalur is something anybody has ever heard of before. Right. Like Star Wars Hint, The guys, Old Republic. People don't, knew what the Republic was. Please don't name your was. game franchise after the fictional world that is set in. Come up with something else. Or, if you are going to name your game franchise after the fictional world it's set in, have that be a world that we've heard of before. Yeah. Yeah, calling the game Narnia, that means something to someone. Absolutely. Like, Nar- Narnia, there's some visuals that go along with it. Calling your world Amalur and then naming the game that, not so much. 
I'm trying to think of what kind of visuals I get when I hear Amalur in my head. And basically it's I'm a, fish- I'm a fisherman who really has trouble pronouncing his sentences. Yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking that that's like an anthropomorphic fishing lure. It's like, hey, there you go. I'm a lure. I'm a lure. <laughs> yes. There we go. That joke ran itself into the ground. Let's move on. Duels of the Planeswalkers 2013 is coming out tomorrow. And Yay, did you ever magic, play 2012? Can play. I... I played the demo for the original release of Duels of the Planewalkers and was so unimpressed that I never picked up any full actual version we of it. We picked up the 2012 version. Yeah, it picked... was like super cheap on Steam. Despite them offering me real world magic cards for buying this game for my PS3, I never did because I had that little amount of fun with it. I actually liked 2012. Uh, fairly well for the limited amount of time I spent with it, and I don't know that there's more mileage to be had for me, but uh, what I did play there, I enjoyed. I actually felt a little burned because it has like an RPG element where by progressing through the storyline, there is no actual storyline, but there's a series of missions. You unlock new cards for customizing your deck, and you unlock new decks to play with, and that provides motivation for wanting to finish more missions but i bought the premium version because it was on a crazy sale and i was like hey why not and then it turns out that all the premium version meant is that everything was unlocked from the start which means you lose the progression of the game you're not unlocking anything anymore like oh i actually paid to make the game worse for myself dang it I didn't know that until after I had already made the purchase, though, so... Uh, The other thing I wanted to say about Duels 2013 is... It is, like, halfway through 2012. This is fully six months away from 2013, so... Being a little aggressive with this naming scheme, wizards. Australia finally announced a... Uh, announced plans to in- institute an 18 plus rating for video games, which means oh, that. Wait, we should wait for uh, Sen to get back to that. He got up and was pointing and mouthing something at me that I didn't understand. Huh. Hi. Okay. The power of editing will make that all work. But I think you should be there for that. Do-do-do-do. Earlier, he thought I was reading something that was making me angry. Really, I was just reading TV tropes. <laughs> Apparently, I had a strange look on my face.
So here's something random that uh, you'll probably go nowhere. What the hell happened to that Beyond Good and Evil sequel? Do -do -do. We announced that like four years ago. <laughs> yup. And then we never heard anything since. Let's see. I have no idea what you were trying to say to me as you left, by the way. BRB. Oh. Pyro was in a really good stream, and I didn't want to interrupt him. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm going to quietly go, because my stomach is, like, severely protesting me. I'm going to go, gonna go take care of this mm -hmm. before we get something on audio that no one wants to listen to. <laughs> oh, God, my so bones. So I wanted to politely inform you that... I will be right back if I'd really thought I would have grabbed this and written BRB on it. Mm -hmm. But, like, Pyro was in a really good stream going on about anyway, magic. And I was so, like, walk away. We're going to get into another really good one. Pyro, go. Pyro, go. Australia oh, do has, I need to clap? Australia has announced plans to make an 18-plus rating available for video games. Which means Finally! that it will, they're not crazy and awful and stupid anymore. And Pixie mentioned to me when I was talking about covering this story that that matters if you're in Australia, but actually, um, it, it kind of matters more because developers design their games around where they're going to be released, especially right. bigger ones. And so the way it had been before is that, well, mostly developers would just release well, games for... Senate, apparently. It's not just a plan, it's the, this was a bill, and it has passed their Senate. Um, last night. Right. And the rating will not be available for a year or so, but it is almost definitely going to come to pass. Yeah. So what had been happening so far is that companies would design their games largely for um, Europe, the US, and Japan, and then edit the heck out of them to release them in Australia. Uh, there is always the risk that in the back of their mind, publishers have the idea that there's no 18 plus rating in Australia. Just and so the game just won't be released there. That, that that is another option, or they'll nerf the design from the very very beginning at the design doc level to save them trouble later. Right. But um, what's interesting here is apparently uh, the, 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 all the all this at the uh, federal level is just a. Just like a toe in the pool, basically, because each state has to... Uh, ratings and classifications are a state issue, and so each of the states will then have to pass their own legislation to enact those ratings into law. Yep. Uh, let's see. If the states move quickly, we may well see the R18 plus rating pass into law at or before the projected date of January 1st next year. It's according to this r18games.com.au. Other than just the practical effects of all these games not being released in Australia, much to Yahtzee's chagrin, amongst others. Yeah, he imports any M-rated titles he ends up playing. Uh, the sort of offensive thing about the lack of an 18-plus rating is the idea that yes. only children play video games, and that the medium has no merit beyond that. Yep. That is patently untrue, so get some acknowledgement to that is nice. Careful, Roger Ebert is going to fight with you about this games are art thing. Well, Roger Ebert games will are distractions die for small very children. soon, so oh. and not not because I'm going to kill him, but you know, cancer and he lost his jaw already, and oh. he he's done some good writing and good contributions to society, but he has apparently lost his ability to keep up with the times, and now he will go away. <laughs> wow, Pyro. That's cold. That, that is ice cold and harsh, and I don't <laughs> think I'm going to take it back. It's like, 
well, if you cannot adapt to it, technology, then you have to go the way of the dodo for society to progress. Moving on, then. Pixie had a question. Pixie has a question. Pixie yeah. has misplaced her question. Your question was, whatever happened to Beyond Good and Evil 2? Ah. I didn't realize we were going to actually talk about that. Welcome to Developer Purgatory. Uh, I, I kind of didn't even remember that Beyond Good and Evil 2 had been announced, because yep. it was officially announced in 2010, which is um, a long time was, after 2003, uh, was, uh, when Beyond Good and Evil came actually. out. Uh, yes, we got a video for it in 2010, though. Michael Ansel first talked about Beyond Good and Evil 2 being in production in an interview with the French magazine Zevideo magazine I don't know yep you pronounced that right I can't speak French I'm gonna go right out there and say that so I'm guessing so where he stated that the game had been in pre-production for a year but was yet to be approved and that was in 2008 yep so it had been in pre-production for a year in 2008 well here's the issue and then, Beyond Good and Evil didn't sell very well in its original run. Uh, and then two week, less than two weeks later, a teaser trailer came out. Yep. And that was shown at Ubi Days. Mm-hmm. Ubisoft is notorious for having uh, almost all of their games developed by all of their studios simultaneously around the world, and they collaborate very well amongst their studios. But the official developer for Beyond Good and Evil that was announced is Ubisoft Montpellier, which has been going and blowing in terms of other games. Uh, they released From Dust, Rayman Origins, and the Tintin movie tie-in game. And they are the announced developer on Zombie U, which is one of the Wii U launch games. Or launch window yeah. games, of course, because we know Let's that see. new hardware and launch games never come out at launch. And then according to this, I'm going to go a little bit further, in December of 2008 at the VGL event in Paris, it was stated that Beyond Good and Evil 2 had been under development for a year and a half. Uh, the development team has received total freedom from Ubisoft, giving them the opportunity to make the game however they want. Then in another interview in March of 2009, he stated that the game was still in pre-production and they wouldn't start actual development until they decided on all the tools and processes, which, make, which made it sound like Possibly next gen game. So, uh, the conclusive answer is that unless you work at Ubisoft Montpellier, there's no way to know what the deal is with Ubisoft 2 or with Beyond Good and Evil 2. Oh, Ubisoft the out. game. <laughs> no, Ubisoft 2. It's just the sequel publisher to Ubisoft. We made the sequel. It's, it's a more out, modern, better publisher than Ubisoft. Uh, apparently, it was announced as a. The, uh, and so announced that in June of 2011, so last year, uh, he plans to develop Beyond Good and Evil 2 for the next generation of consoles, which had yet to be announced. Speaking of, I heard an interesting rumor about the next generation of consoles uh, from this year's E3. Mm -hmm. That Watch Dogs looks too good. Watch Dogs and Agni's Philosophy, specifically the new Square game, Look that, too uh, good Agni's to philosophy on... was specifically a next generation tech demo. It was yeah. announced to be on next generation hardware. Okay. Right. But but be, because of those two demonstrations and the fact that they were being run on PCs at the time, despite the fact that they were announced to be console things, yep. um, that they look too good to be for the current console. Yeah, I, I have no question whatsoever. And Watch we Do will... Watch Dogs is a next gen production and they just can't say that yet we are not going to see watchdogs on the current generation consoles i do not doubt that at all the processing power behind that game is too great for what we have right now a ps3 could not handle that i, th game. I think watchdogs has some SEO i've problems. already had that problem when i tried to google this trailer to watch uh, a w uh two weeks ago okay watchdogs has some search engine problems. Yep. Because if you type watchdogs into Google, the first thing you get is the National Sex Offender Registry. Yup. Which is also known as the Family Watchdog. 
Yup. Underneath that is the E3 trailer and gameplay demo. But... You know, I'm, I'm kind of surprised. I think it says something about Google that their, their analytics for the Watchdog trailer are not high enough to trump the number of people checking on sex offenders in their area. Well, there's a lot of stuff that goes into the uh, Google algorithm, apparently, which you know, is a lot of hot magic and mystery to begin with. But um... Google run by mages you heard it here first <laughs> i'm sure i'm not the first person who's made that joke google is wizards google is actually just a single wizard who responds to every search request by casting a spell he yep. just works all day his actual name is google that that's not the name of a company that's the name of the guy it's an individual Google the wizard. It's Larry Page someone, and Sergey Brin just summoned a wizard from the nether realm. Someone draw him for us. We want to see a drawing of Google the wizard. Speaking of next generation consoles, there was a document leak, allegedly, and this is a fairly sketchy rumor, uh, stating that, oh, that the Xbox 720 would be uh, $300 updated Connect and have connected glasses, which... Are. Can we Here. not do goofy peripherals anymore? Because um, I'm getting really sick of this. Shoot. Is this in a doc? I remember you showing me this image, but I wanted to show Sam. I, I am so tired of goofy, weird peripherals. I'm barely tolerating the Wii U as a thing as it is. I don't want to see PlayStation glasses. I don't know a single person who bought the PlayStation Move. I am. My Kinect was used it's all right of on once. I am 100% for goofy peripherals because I'm not the person who's buying them. As a PC gamer, I just watch the Remember, news. The answer is always more art. Never and less. then when there's a peripheral that is good amongst the many that are bad, then the market will bubble that to the surface and I'll catch it on the second generation once everything's way better. And then I get cool gadgets with no downsides. I do love how most of the connects that were sold were actually sold for purposes besides playing games. So I've got these glasses here for augmented reality stuff. Supposedly this is like an internal document plan. And how about I just interact with my console by using a controller? I don't uh, want to talk at my TV. I don't want to wave my hand at my TV. So I want to this, pick up the controller and this play. Gadget piece, um, Nobody's stopping you from doing that. You can still do that <laughs> and you do do that every day <laughs> it's and it's not gonna go away proposed developments include cloud-based entertainment which is already kind of a thing with the cloud-based storage uh native 3d augmented reality glasses scalable hardware i don't want to look around my apartment and see necromorphs coming through the walls I don't know, I think that, that would be that, the definition of a bad day. <laughs> that sounds pretty awesome. Uh, the There's not very much information about Connect Glasses, but the thing it is often compared to is Google's Project Glass, which is a little visor like the Scouter from Dragon Ball Z that you wear basically as a cell phone peripheral. Uh, you wear it around your daily life, and you can see through the screen but it can display information to you, like right. a clock or text messages or stuff. Or if and... you, the, the application that I saw that kind of interested me the most was that uh, if you look at, say, the front of a restaurant, it'll display the hours and the menu of the restaurant while you're looking at it. That would be pretty awesome. Another thing that would be pretty awesome for Project so... Glass in its outside the living room context is Zombies Run, because... There's no indication in Zombies Run, really, of how close the zombies are to you, except for a beeping, like a bomb, that gets faster. A, a visual indicator would really supplement that a lot. I don't know, being able to look at the Noodle Factory in Las Vegas, Nevada, and have it tell us that it's a I freaking Noodle Factory would have been down, nice. Am I? I don't think this one was your fault. Yeah, I, I, I fully take the blame for Noodle Factory. Right. I, I, I was, was the like, champion hey, of Noodle Factory. Place, this uh, like and, then, and then he made up for it by taking us to that wonderful dim sum place afterwards. I, I, God, I've never been more embarrassed Just like, in my life. I, I think the, the Google Glass thing sounds ridiculously cool. I cannot wait um, for this to become see. a part of everyday technology. I'm questioning how many people are immediately going to make the over 9,000 app for it. Well, 
remember, every single human like, being on the planet Earth, guys, guys, seven right? billion people will make that. Microsoft already unveiled its uh, Xbox Smart Glass at E3 this year. That is a totally unrelated thing. That is using a smartphone such as an iPhone, iPad, yes, Android device. But that is referenced in that old do- in that rumor document. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But that that'll be a part of the 720. Right here. Right. So we already have pieces of what's and supposedly here. going to become the next Xbox. And since this, uh, but that's not much of a revelation. If there's right. a new technology that they're integrating at end of life with Xbox 360, it will probably be more closely integrated with the next generation. Yeah. It, I mean, we can admit, live was the defining thing of this Xbox. Like, integrating live this much into the consumer experience was a phenomenal success for, for Microsoft. They did a fantastic job. It was really well received. Now they are going to have to step it up, though, because every other game console is going to be running the same kind of live features, the same kind of social network integration, the same kind of uh, third-party software integration, Netflix, Hulu, uh, Zoom. Probably Except not the, Zoom for the other people. The Wii U is still going to have friend codes. Simplified friend codes, but friend codes, which Nintendo means Nintendo doesn't terrible. trust their players. That also, means that Nintendo should die. <laughs> much like Roger Ebert. I have no remorse if you won't join the, the future. episode in which we declare war on Roger Ebert and Nintendo. If you Say refuse you to join the Roger future, Ebert, but it's too far you're when die. you're going at Nintendo. <laughs> I, I, I mean, part of the problem is that they try really, really hard to um, ensure the family-friendly aspect. Yeah, they're trying to protect their younger audience. Whereas Microsoft and Sony are like, your problem. Yeah, this is like, we know there's dicks. The idea that you can, like, do little drawings with your next-gen Wii V persona things. Right. That, that's just asking for it. <laughs> But we're, there is a number of parental controls you can use <laughs> to protect a child from Xbox Live and PSN, up right. to and including not connecting those consoles to the internet. Yeah, the it's, it's... thing about Nintendo is that in order to protect these little kids, we are absolutely hamstringing all adults. Yep. Which is and basically that's... the same thing that Australia's been doing. Yep. <laughs> Gotta protect uh, the children. That's just not acceptable. Even if you're making them sit in a uh, air pr- airtight box. So yeah, what else do we have this week? I don't know. We've already been going like an hour. I know it. Well, we haven't really been going for more than an hour because there was oh, a yeah, there were, there fairly there were long break gaps. in the middle. Pixie, uh, since the humble indie bundle, you've been playing Psycho Nuts a little bit. Do you like it? Uh, I do actually. I, I had heard lots of good things about this game. But never, I, it was just one of those titles that I had missed. And let's see, how many hours have I sunk? It's in? your fault Tim Schafer cries at night. I have now sunk eight hours into this. And I still feel like I've barely touched it. I really do. It's, it, it surprised me because for some reason I thought this was going to be like a quick little adventure nope. thing. This game's freaking huge! Psychonauts is an enormous, platforming, multi-tiered exploration game. And it just gets deeper as you go. So much stuff! I just just can't believe how long this game is. Mm -hmm. Uh, My Steam counter says I put 13 hours into it, and I did not actually beat it. I got... I, I cheated, for one thing, to get past a very long part where you have to collect... Uh, they're not figments. What's the currency? Arrowheads. Yep. Uh, there's a, there's sort of a lame part in Psychonauts where you have to grind arrowheads for a while, and I skipped that part, so most of my time was spent in the actual platforming, and I'm still not near the end at 13 hours. Oh, I do love the sense of humor in Psychonauts. Like, the section, the Milkman section of the game is utterly yet. hysterical. <laughs> you will love it. The Milkman um, part is pretty great. The Milkman is fantastic. Uh, I love going into every character's head and realizing just how messed up they are. Like, especially the military guy at the start of the game. Mm. Like, he is Fuck just... Oleander. Yeah, he is just, like, 
Ten stages of wow. I, I utterly adore the writing in Psychonauts, and I wish there were more I, games I, like I, it. I just ran into that really screwed up Easter egg where you learn levitation and you're in um, Mila's head with mm-hmm. her little dance party thing. And I'm like, she's really she's colorful. interesting. And then I, I was like, oh, look, there's some pigments on that platform over there. There's a, there's this platform over there. I'm going to jump on that. I was like, it's a nursery in here. This is different from the dance club out there that jumped out of the 70s. Right. Uh, no. Okay, a vault. Here's some memories. Oh, God. She used to take care of children in an orphanage, and it caught fire, and they died, and she heard them psychically as they died. <laughs> Every, I, I think the, the subtext for uh, Psychonauts is everyone has baggage. Everyone. <laughs> And, that uh, reminds me of in the StarCraft novels. I don't remember if it was Kerrigan or Nova, but they say that ghosts are usually very fucked up because they're trained assassins, but they can hear the thoughts of their victims as they're dying. There's yeah. one particular scene where uh, she kills a dude who's thinking about waffles, and then she's haunted by waffles. It's like, <laughs> he just wished he had eaten waffles for breakfast, and then I killed him. Stupid waffles. Worst last thoughts ever. Anyway, I was just... Yeah, there, there are little things like that like, throughout yeah, the entire there's game. There's this hidden room there. It, it, it doesn't do anything like as far as progression in the game. Nobody makes reference to it. Nope. Just character things that you find hidden around in everyone's head. And there's this great big flaming cage full of like nightmare creatures trying to claw at it, crying at you. It's like, oh god... I'm going to close the store and go back to the ultra cool 70s party. (laughs) Basically. Nobody ever mentions it again. Just slowly back out of the room, shut the door, and pretend you weren't there. She makes a mention like, you don't want to go in there. The party's out here. But she sounds so nice about it. I was like, oh. No, I'll go check it out. It's probably just like your secret crocheting or something. Nope. Nope. (laughs) She was being honest. And and that's really the strength of the the Tim Schafer games. Like they they have such depth that your average player isn't necessarily going to interact with, but it's there if you want it. There's always interesting characters in the stories. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of what I would have thought of the game had I not gone in there. You realize that it has better writing than it you gave it credit for. Clearly, I was just like. And all of a sudden, that level wasn't as fun anymore. I, I mean, it it says something about those characters that, yeah, that's a part of them. And every character has something like that, some dark secret. Some of them are comical. Some of them are really funny. Uh, Coach Oleanders is, is hilarious. Hmm. But there's literally things like that about everyone, including Raz. I mean, you just look at the last boss of the game and you're like, oh... That explains so much. I'm not going to spoil that one. All right. So, Microsoft had a press conference over the week where they announced their two Surface tablets. And this is not as exciting as people were kind of hoping the press conference would be, but they have 10-inch tablets, same size as the iPad, with one with an ARM processor, which runs Windows RT, which is kind of a... It's from the same code base as actual desktop Windows, but it runs on ARM processors, which are what phones use, and they're... It's kind of a newer, better processor design, but people don't use it because lots of software has already been written for x86. And then they have the Pro version, which runs actual Windows 8. And... Oh, they they look like iPads. (laughs) They're they're not very interesting as far as I'm I, I concerned. Know that, I know that Windows 8 was just recently announced, but um... it has touch interfaces and Metro styling, like the Windows Phone 7 interface. So Windows oh, 8 will be the one more. we don't buy, right? And then Windows 9 will be the good version of Windows 8. They're uh, like Star Trek movies. Yeah, you skip one, and you're good to go. Sounds like a plan. Yep, it'll probably be fine. Yeah. But. The I press conference. Is, uh, like very app based. Do I want apps for my computer? I don't think but, I do. Well, 
you already use apps for your computer. They're just right. called software at this point. But but do I want more dedicated Microsoft apps to get my computer functioning? This is the app that causes it to not crash on startup. Oh, we're charging you $20 for that one. Oh. This is the app that lets you connect to the internet. Yeah? That one's eight ninety nine. Oh. Oh. Uh, the branding they're using for their tablets, which is Surface, is was historically used for a tech demo they had of giant tables yes, that had the, multi-touch touchscreens. The one that everyone was like, can we use it for D&D? <laughs> that, that would be awesome. But these are not giant tables, so nope. much disappointment. Very We will find out more when they actually come out. Okay. Oh, one thing I wanted to mention. Dude, this week's big picture. Right it explained something off. very well that we only sort of touched on at the end of yesterday's show, which is the idea that um, yeah, he did there is objectification yesterday. of men in media. Oh, Bob explains it all very well. Yes. He, d- he doesn't mention one point that I had made, but hey, I, 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 I can scoop him on one thing, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> what is that point? Uh, the, the... That the objectification of males as a defense falls apart because that is a power fantasy rather than any kind of exploitation. Yeah, no, he mentions a, that. It's not a sexual based thing, it's a capability thing. Right. Was, that those characters still get agency. Kratos may be half dressed, but he's also tearing the head off of a chimera in rage. I, I I think he kind of covers that. Uh, the one yep. thing he kind of contradicts himself is that he says that portrayals of of idealized male bodies are as pervasive as idealized female bodies. But then he goes on to say that there are uh, there lots, are lots of, of non-idealized male, male portrayals. So yeah. he he kind of I thought he was wrong when he says the first thing, but then he corrects himself later. I really think the number of overweight females that I can describe in in the gaming uh, canon of every video game ever, I'm pretty sure I can count that on one hand. I'm not going to try to. Uh, The number of overweight male characters, particularly villains. Even good guys. Even the good guys. that, That is a far more substantial number. Right, and that that is the thing I was saying about object or uh, idealized female bodies not being a bad thing. Is that yes, there are a billion portrayals of idealized male bodies, but that does not have the same effect because there's also lots of non-idealized portrayals. That's yep. fine that you have the idealized ones as long as there are other things to balance it. Mm-hmm. The old right. republic just sent me an email saying that they that my payment for my subscription was declined and I had no credit cards with them at all so they're like yours no credit cards have been declined your world has been closed you will now be executed by an assassin just like this show my sith warrior probably has that coming he's not a good person so do the we have show any... won't keep up with the future it's time for it to die else? We're going to go execute Nerd Talk around back. Come no, on, just this yeller. episode. It's time. Aw, oh, did you really have to go there? I did. <sighs> Alright, so I guess I'll close up. In the meantime, I'm Pixie. I'm Sen. And I'm Parasim. And you've been listening to Nerd Talk. We'll catch you next week for Lollipop Chainsaw. Come on, boy. This is for your own good. We need some, like, sad banjo music now to close us out. Can you be sad with banjo? Followed by the sound of a shotgun blast. Pyro, edit those in.